called Thor Smash! Howdy. LEGO tends to get a pretty heavy fanfare, but not just for its toys. For decades now, there's been a ton of LEGO video games, some of which you might have played growing up or maybe even today. I know I've played a few. These LEGO games have gone on for nearly 30 years now and have actually spanned generations. Although LEGO games generally tend to be designed with the younger viewer in mind, I think many of these games have an appeal for the adult player too. Often there's this unique, smooth, cheery, light-hearted charm to these games taking franchises we enjoy and parodying them with a tongue-in-cheek quality, while still showing a lot of affection for the original material. That being said, the LEGO games were definitely not all created equal. Some LEGO games are pitifully horrendous and simply don't stand up to the quality we expect in 2020. So with the upcoming release of LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga, I think now's a great time to check out the top five best and worst LEGO games. And as always, keep in mind, it's just my silly personal opinion. So if you enjoy it and I don't, well, more power to you. Anyway, on to the countdown. For the fifth worst, LEGO Stunt Rally. Well done, LEGO Stunt Rally. I dub you the laziest game controls ever produced. Hooray, we're all very proud, sort of. So LEGO Stunt Rally is a top-down racing game reminiscent of slot car racing games. And disturbingly, not just in presentation, but also in gameplay and controls. Like real slot cars, there's little to no actual input from the player when the slot cars are racing. All you do is press up, and the car zips on a predetermined path, and that's it. But wait, there are occasional generic power-ups, and occasionally you have to stop pressing up in order to make turns. But it's one control, the up button, that's it. As a result, this is possibly the most boring game on the entire list. But what's that you say? Well, at least I can hold my up button while driving my fancy customized car. Or you'd be wrong. There is absolutely no possible customization to your vehicle or character. But what's that you say? At least while I'm driving my flavorless pre-customized car and holding my up button, I can look at the pretty scenery. But no! Dull generic settings are all that await you on these racetracks. I mean, I guess the graphical style of the boring pre-made characters is nice enough. So the greatest plus for this LEGO game is that it doesn't not look like a LEGO game. Hooray. However, weirdly enough, the voice acting is shockingly good. Congratulations, you've won these fabulous prizes. Like, they couldn't be bothered to vary the controls or detail the racetracks, but apparently they brought in the best of voice actors and voice directors. So I guess if you're blind, this might be a good racing game. But if you're not blind, I definitely don't recommend LEGO Stunt Rally. And for the fifth best... LEGO Star Wars The Force Awakens. Wow, for a LEGO game, this is legitimately beautiful. As of filming this anyway, this is the most recent adaption from Star Wars to a LEGO game. And LEGO Force Awakens manages to flesh out the gameplay of the LEGO games, particularly the combat. We are of course taken through the story of Rey going from Junker to Jedi. Except it's been cleverly tweaked to be an abridged, comedic retelling of the story. One that pokes some affectionate fun at the story, rather than making it a straight retelling, which is always welcomed. I also enjoy these little additions to the story that we get to experience ourselves as Rey. There were so many moments from the final three Star Wars movies that I wanted to see more of. For example, here we get to help Rey explore Luke's island upon first landing there. I don't remember that part in the movie. That's awesome. And having the original Daisy Ridley there to voice her really adds to the authenticity of it. Oh, one last thing. Stop being evil. But I'm a stormtrooper. Gameplay is a bit more heavy on the combat, with it feeling much more in-depth than many other LEGO games. Animations like the lightsaber swinging look even more natural and smooth than ever. And blasters now remind me of a decent third-person FPS. There's now a cover system to add more depth and strategy to the experience, rather than it being just about mashing the fire button. We also have here stud bonuses. They're those little coin-like collectibles you see. You'll probably see them in most LEGO games. The puzzles have also gotten more interesting, now involving building things up and breaking things down. And I think that was a really cool, traditional LEGO addition. And this is without even mentioning all the ships you can fly in the game. And they not only control well, but they can maneuver where they want to freely now. The graphics of the game are particularly stunning. 
mixing the plastic aesthetics of Legos together with that metallic futuristic design of Star Wars. That being said, there are a few performance drops here and there. Especially when multiplayer gets involved. These minor bugs are part of what keep this game from being really good. There's oodles of collectibles and the abridged story is bound to give you a few chuckles. And the combat system's deeper than ever. I'd say LEGO Force Awakens is a definite evolution of the LEGO games. I'm going to be excited to see how the Skywalker Saga builds upon this game. My job's done here. Let's go home. And for the fourth worst... LEGO Island 2 Brixter's Revenge Continuing the trend of disappointing sequels as LEGO Island 2. The first game was a fun but very technologically aged experience on the island. We got to explore what life was like on LEGO Island and meet the different characters. I would have definitely preferred if Pepper didn't talk as much, but you take what you get. I'm a pizza delivery dude, the dude with the food. And there was a number of pretty cool mini games to play, though I could never find where to deliver that freaking pizza in time. Ah! With brick by brick on the radio continually over and over, it's all coming back to me. Brick by brick, talk by tick, no matter how thin, no matter how thick. But anyway, LEGO Island 2 dropped the ball completely on improving the original game. This time around, it's a third person open world adventure game with half hearted minigames thrown in to supplement the gameplay. The story of this game is that Brickster has escaped prison again and has unleashed an army of robots to not annihilate, but just generally annoy the island inhabitants. And the devious Brickster will even tear pages from the Constructopedia, making the island's buildings disappear. So it's up to Pepper Roni to collect all the pages scattered across the island. And we gotta travel to other islands and obviously capture the Brickster. This sounds good, but I always thought what was cool about LEGO is it's like a microcosm of the typical city society. When I was a kid and played it, I felt like I was in LEGO world. Listening to their terrible radio station play the same song over and over and over. Anyway, the gameplay tries to add more, but ends up falling flat in every department. The game's gone from being an exploration-based adventure to just completing fetch quests and playing boring minigames. I definitely appreciate that the graphics look much better than the original game. Not that that would be difficult, the original game looked terrible. But Pepper's movement just doesn't feel right. He walks really weird on the ground and jumps so heavy, it just feels odd. Making for a very lukewarm start to the core gameplay. And I hope you like minigames, because the game tasks us with a small tsunami of minigames. And not the fun Mario Party kind either. The boring kind. They're all continually lackluster, exploitable, or both. At least in the original, the minigames are optional and just a distraction from the main game. However, the most annoying part of this game is, without a doubt, the voice acting. Every voice actor flubs almost every line they speak and was clearly given bad direction. Most notably, Pepper's lines are outright tone deaf and often give the wrong inflection. The dude with the food is here, DJ man. And that's humorous to make fun of, but it doesn't do the game any favors. But the main thing that has stuck with me through these LEGO Island games is that blasted song. At this point, after 24 years, I'm starting to assume I'll be humming this song till I die. Oh well, at least I'll always be able to assume I have a cheery tune to hum. Break by break, break by break. And I think the fourth best LEGO game is... LEGO City Undercover. Now this is an immersive LEGO world done well. Think of a GTA clone, but made for the younger crowd with its own unique personality. LEGO City Undercover is Traveler's Tale's first attempt at an original LEGO game, not based on any movie franchise. Here we follow our hero, the undercover cop, Chase McCain. Chase. Chase McCain. Chase McCain?! You're a legend! He returns to the city to lock up the criminals and find their ringleader, Rex Fury. Rex Fury. We play through a kind of GTA style world, but I personally like these characters better than some of the GTA characters. There's such a bite of personality to these characters. It's like being in a sitcom, a good sitcom. Their dialogue has this wit, self-awareness, and feels very natural. Get down to the basement and get a uniform on! Are you two old friends? The remake in particular really shows that Traveler's Tales are perfectly capable of making their own unique personality filled world. And the game's presentation is beautiful, looking absolutely stunning on some of the newer consoles like PS4 Pro. How for 20 or 30 years the industry has managed to keep improving the graphics of LEGO blocks is beyond me. But they certainly have. 
Look at the textures here, the colors, the background noise, the feel as McCain snoops around, all with its own unique Lego charm. There are times when the frame rate does take a hit, but this is generally pretty rare. And generally, this is pretty common in these larger world games. McCain has a ton of different abilities too. He dons different disguises which allow him different abilities, letting him solve puzzles and find hidden collectibles. He can also scan for footprints, access maps, communicate with others, all that good jazz. Staying true to the game's GTA influence, Chase can also hijack vehicles. I mean, mass genocide obviously isn't on the table in a Lego game, but the open world GTA feel is certainly there. But to me, the real showstopper of LEGO City is the writing and comedy. The game's got that cheesy, light-hearted LEGO tone with tons of good dialogue. Fire extinguishers are not toys. They are not to be played with. Follow me over here. Whee! Oozing with charm and personality, I think the LEGO City undercover games have definitely been a step in the right direction for LEGO games. And I think the third worst LEGO game is... LEGO Rock Raiders for the PS1. Congratulations, Rock Raiders! You take the SAD award for being one of the worst console ports of all time, failing the original PC game in almost every way. LEGO Rock Raiders was originally a PC game, and a pretty good one. It was a real-time strategy and micromanaging game that had you command LEGO minifigures to mine for energy crystals in order to fuel your rocket to get back home. Unfortunately, the PlayStation version does away with all the original gameplay and instead gives us a tedious dungeon crawler. Oh Here we control a minifigure directly and have him tediously avoid enemies, mine rocks and ride vehicles. And frankly, the enemy variety stinks. There's a total of three different enemies throughout the entire game, save for the occasional boss. And mining is essential for the player to create a path and win the game. So clearly they said, hey, let's make that more tedious and monotonous. Personally, I love me some micromanagement. But unfortunately, LEGO Rock Raiders has morphed into a sad, slow collectathon game. Now we don't have to manage our air supply, different terrain, or even what rocks to mine. Not to mention the graphics in this game are just polygony, dreary garbage. The screen is just full of dull shades of brown and grey. LEGO Rock Raiders for the PS1 is simply a forgettable mess. And for the third best... LEGO Batman 2 DC Superheroes. I think this was a much needed shakeup that LEGO games of the past two decades needed. We get a ton of cool additions here. We get a LEGO game with full voice acting, co-op multiplayer, and tons of different superheroes to play as. In general, I'm a big fan of open world designs. And LEGO Batman 2 was the first game in the franchise to include an open, free-roaming hub world. And it works so well that it became a mainstay in the franchise. There's plenty for the player to do and explore here. Gotham City is huge. It has its own side quests, things to see, things to collect, and its own set pieces to make sure the player can find their way around each. Easy. The inclusion of Superman and other flying superheroes makes traversing Gotham a joy, since we can zip through the sky and get to our objectives quickly. The story this time is that Lex Luthor and Bruce Wayne are both nominated to win the Man of the Year award. Is that a real award? That's such a stupid name whenever I hear it. Surely that's not a real award. Does anyone else think that's a really stupid name for an award? Just me? No? Thank you, Boo. Anyway, the ceremony's interrupted by Joker prompting Batman to apprehend him. Lex Luthor, in disbelief he didn't win the Man of the Year award, teams up with Joker and the other villains of Gotham to get his revenge on Wayne. And since now we have complete voice acting, the cutscenes feel more lively than ever before. And they didn't skimp on the actors either. You hear this guy? Sound familiar? One man who has made it his mission to improve the lives of people around him. Probably sounds familiar, right? You really should loosen up, dear. Have a laugh now and then. That's because it's the legendary Mark Hamill as a Joker again. And who better could you choose for the Lego Joker? A standing ovation? Did not expect that, but I'll take it. And also everything else. And this guy sure rang familiar too. No thanks. I don't want to get joy buzzed. Hello! I like money! Yep, it's Mr. Krabs, aka Clancy Brown. How much time do we have before those pies go off? Oh, like five minutes. He's too expensive apparently for SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom, but not too expensive for LEGO Batman 2. 
Anyway, the original LEGO Batman game only gave us Batman and Robin to play as, but LEGO Batman 2 gives us all these different superheroes, and it feels really varied and refreshing. Many of the DC superheroes even bring their own signature abilities to the table. There's plenty of collectibles and plenty of side quests of saving Gotham citizens. It's good fun. The presentation has also had a massive overhaul, with the graphics looking the best LEGO graphics ever had in 2012. Anyway, with an original story, witty and fun characterization, and a more immersive LEGO experience than ever, LEGO Batman 2 just might be worth your time. I couldn't have done it without a little help from my friends. Uh, a little? And the second worst LEGO game is... LEGO Racers 2. Oh dear. Usually in gaming, sequels take the first game in a series and pinpoint what made the original game good. They expand on that concept and scrap the bad aspects of the game. Unfortunately, LEGO Racers 2 decided to try the opposite approach. They threw out what made the original game good and changed the gameplay and design for the bad. Ugh, oh, where's the spark? Where's the heart and personality of the original game? The original LEGO Racers was a fun kart racer with some nice customizability. It had a lively, colourful presentation as well, and some solid racing controls. Although I still preferred Diddy Kong Racing. The game's unique item mechanics and lively graphics made it a memorable game. LEGO Racers 2, on the other hand, it throws out the fast-paced action and shoves in some slow, annoying, long-winded levels. The track design is a particular frustration. Levels now feel more tedious and frankly, a little aimless. The tracks are now open, vast plateaus of minimal content, with nothing of any real challenge being presented. Some tracks just feel downright lazy, sometimes just being a circle or a figure eight. I'd say the item mechanics of the first LEGO game were among its most defining features for how unique and uh, exploitable it was. That being said, I think it gave the game a unique identity. Here, we're given a way more bland set of items in the first game. The adventure mode picks up pretty much straight after the story of the first game. Rocket Race has fallen into a depressed state after losing to us, the player in LEGO Racers 1. But he then stumbles across a newspaper flyer and travels to the planet of Zarlax to reclaim his title. So we gotta win races to get closer to challenging Rocket Racer. I guess in concept that's okay, but execution-wise it's completely botched. The hub world is a barren waste heap, with a tiny town being the only set piece on the entire island. You're supposed to race whatever character the game gives you, but some of these races are nigh on unwinnable on the first attempt. That's of course because we can only progress if we complete tedious side missions. We pick up and drop off characters like in Crazy Taxi or Simpsons Road Rage, but with none of the personality. These are basically mandatory if you want to win any races. I never thought I'd see the day where grinding was implemented into a racing game. Yep. Here we are! While the game is plagued with issues, it does have some merits. Like the music isn't half bad, and for PlayStation 2 graphics, these are relatively crisp. But overall, I felt LEGO Racers 2 was a disappointing sequel. And I think the second best LEGO game is... LEGO Marvel Super Heroes. Now this feels more cinematic. For a 2013 LEGO game, LEGO Marvel Super Heroes has amazing care, detail and polish put into it. This was actually the direct follow-up to LEGO Batman 2, and it shows. It's adopted many of the game concepts that were present there, but this time they've polished and refined it to be even better. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes gives us a massive roster of playable characters, a unique world and its own original story. The story this time centers around Doctor Doom destroying the Silver Surface board, causing it to scatter all of its components. And then Doom recruits a whole roster of Marvel villains to help him acquire the components to fuel his Doom Ray. But we'll see a ton of those typical Marvel antics and matchups along the way. From Dr. Octopus trashing the Daily Bugle, to Loki rallying the Frost Giants in Asgard. And the villains and heroes are constantly interconnecting these fun stories together. Oh my stars and garters. What does that even mean? The gameplay is a more in-depth adaptation of LEGO Batman 2, but this time we get a colossal 150 characters to play as, as well as Manhattan being a bigger, more expansive city to explore. Although the gameplay is similar to LEGO Batman 2, the Marvel superheroes and their abilities make puzzle solving feel even fresher. As always, we collect the golden bricks, studs, and so on, but there are quite a few other things to do in the Manhattan hub world as well. 
like finding all the Stanleys. Thank you for saving your Generalissimo, Brigadiers. Excelsior! In fact, once you save every Stanley in Manhattan, you get to play as Stanley. And as he should, he has a ton of cool superpowers. They have ascended Stan Lee from being just another cameo to an entire playable character of his own. How awesome is that? There's also a few new different ways to traverse the city, so we get to web-sling our way around Manhattan, which I found a bit more fun than just flying with Iron Man. Though flying with Iron Man is fun too. Don't tell me. You got here on a really long spider line. Uh, no. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes was obviously crafted with much affection to the enormous world of Marvel Comics. And before we get to number one, just a couple of quick honorable mentions. LEGO Worlds. I really liked the concept of this game when I saw it. So much so that I immediately grabbed it from the Steam store when I saw it in 2017. Unfortunately, I couldn't immerse myself in the endlessly procedurally generated unlimited worlds because I was so hampered by fiddly controls. But there really is so much creativity and potential on display here. In this almost limitless procedural algorithm, you can get so many different types of worlds. And like any good LEGO game, movement through these worlds is pretty seamless with our avatar. Everything is made up of LEGO bricks, even the ground. So just about anything can be dismantled or rebuilt, or copied or pasted. But those finicky controls made this experience more frustrating for me, and I wondered how the younger demographic managed with it. But maybe the younger demographic managed better with these controls, I don't know. Also, I could have used a bit more customization on my character the first time playing the game. But I get that a lot of this has to be unlocked as you play. But I know a lot of people really enjoy this one, and I totally get it. If it's on special and it's up your alley, LEGO Worlds might be worth a look. I've never seen a LEGO sandbox quite like it. LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures. Man. Traveller's Tales and LucasArts have done really well with these games. This one's a nostalgic favourite for many, and I can definitely see why. The formula and control scheme isn't that different from the LEGO Star Wars games, but obviously the setting is very different. And I really enjoyed that varying scenery such as crocodile-filled jungles and trap-filled dangerous temples, jumping between moving trucks taking down henchmen, or even facing down giant snakes. Despite being made of LEGO, the temples do retain a sense of mystery and wonder to them. This is helped a lot by the atmospheric music, the use of lighting, and the colour scheme. To me, Indiana Jones is all about feeling like this adventurous renegade. And for a LEGO game, I think this captures that feeling well. LEGO Dimensions. This one has some really creative worlds, and unbelievably varied characters from so many franchises. From Back to the Future, to Lord of the Rings, to Lego Movie, to even Portal. And they often cross these characters' worlds over, and it's really neat to see. And as is Traveler's Tales tradition, they have that witty, self-aware, sharp humour. The kind that Lego games are known for. My big complaint? It's too hard to access because it uses that Toys to Life feature. In other words, if you want to interact with the game, you'll need those exact right figurines. Some costing up to 40 bucks. Yay. But if you didn't pay much for the figurines and got at least a few hours gameplay, well, more power to you. Anyway, on to the number ones. And I can say with certainty, the number one worst Lego game is Lego Friends. Welcome to LEGO's bottom of the barrel. This is a whole new low we've never seen before for LEGO video games, especially when they've mostly been of such high quality. LEGO Friends is an adaption of the Scala line of LEGO sets. You know, that not quite a Barbie figurine kind. I'm going to take a wild guess they were trying to target the female demographic with this, ignoring the fact that LEGO is generally meant to have a universal appeal. But regardless, this is the lowest effort possible in order to transition this line into a video game. Like, they could have just given me a more lively experience if they just knocked at my door and punched me in the face. The game consists of either watching some of the most lifeless cutscenes you'll ever see, or running around performing horribly dull fetch quests. That, or we get a bare bones minigame that could barely hold my attention for 20 seconds. For example, have you ever wanted to slowly and tediously brush a poorly pixelated dead face dog? Well, now you can. And now you have to slow and meticulously dry it. And it's all done with those notoriously gimmicky third-party stylus controls. LEGO Friends has somehow managed to do a worse job at lip-syncing their dialogue and its animation than Video Brinquado. Hey, 
What are you guys doing here? Anything holding the LEGO brand name should not be of this abysmal quality. How did LEGO ever greenlight this sad waste of energy? And LEGO Friends even gives us a true Generation Z motto. If you ever feel lost, just remember to check your phone. Yes, truly words to live by, young lady. About the only constructive thing that might come out of playing LEGO Friends is logging your spiral into the maddening terror that is your life since playing the game. Even the voice acting sounds rushed and is void of any intonation. Welcome to our home. I can't believe you're finally here. Welcome to Heart Lake City. But I'm still left with one question. What does any of this have to do with LEGO? There's no construction, destruction, studs, or even minifigures. I mean, the buildings kind of look like LEGO. But really, the game can't even muster a reason for its existence beyond the sad claim that it's based on the Scala LEGO line. LEGO Friends is so void of substance it'll likely make people lose friends simply by playing it. If there is a worse LEGO game out there, I haven't yet found it, and hopefully I never will. And as of so far, I think the number one best LEGO game is... LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now this, on the other hand, is a video game worth remembering. While it's technically only a remake of the first two LEGO Star Wars games, that shouldn't take away from all this game achieves. This is a downright solid 3D platformer that reimagines the stories of the first six Star Wars movies. But now there's that charmingly witty sense of humour to it again, though most of this humour is done with little to no dialogue, and this may be a turn off for some people. But the game offers a staggering 100 plus characters to play, all coming from the Star Wars films. We even get Indiana Jones added as an extra character. Each film is broken down into six chapters apiece to divide the story into manageable sections. In each one, the player explores, fights enemies, solves puzzles, pilots spacecrafts, and fights bosses. What I appreciate about this is the bringing of ideas together from both LEGO and Star Wars games, all done in a seamless, unique way, making this feel like a more distinct experience from all the other 3D platformers that flooded the market at the time. When you're not building and destroying LEGO structures, you're also engaging in combat using lightsabers and blasters taken straight from Star Wars. Not only does this game compile two entire console games together, which already makes it large, but the game revels in a ton of replayability as well. Players can revisit any past stages they want with any character they choose, whether they're finding hidden collectibles or just want to see that stage with that character. I also like the challenge missions to complete as well. There's tons of different shop items and loads of different spacecraft you can use in free play. On top of that, there is of course a co-op multiplayer option. So if a brother or a sister or a friend wants to play, they can. There's even a PvP mode if you want to duel. The sheer amount of content this one game now holds is incredible. This is more content than some AAA games have these days. And this is a couple of console generations old now. The game's a fun, simple platformer that just about anyone can pick up and enjoy. The story's tongue-in-cheek, of course, but it reimagines the original movies well. The presentation is also really well-crafted, with everything made of LEGO pieces that faithfully recreate the locations, characters, and ships from the films, as well, of course, as having the epic original movie soundtrack. My main nitpick with this game, I'm a big fan of the original Star Wars actors, and I could have used a bit more voice acting in this game. There's a few familiar grunts here and there, but a little more dialogue would have been nice. But the lack of voice acting does mean no exposition dialogue can be used. Everything is shown, not told. Overall, I consider LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga the current best LEGO game, as of this filming. Though I'm hoping the upcoming Skywalker Saga might even surpass it when it comes out. But if it's going to, it's got a high bar to meet with The Complete Saga. Anyway, with how long it's existed, LEGO has been a big part of many people's childhoods. And for me, anyway, the LEGO games are no different. i found that pretty much all the LEGO games have this sense of humbleness to them. They never try to reinvent the wheel, but they often try to pack in loads of charm, fun, and personality. They often have this aesthetic to them that fills me with this nostalgic lightheartedness that can make me feel young again. Almost all LEGO games have something to offer and can be a pleasant experience for any age. Sure, a few eggs have been broken, but hey, we got
got some good omelets. And if you have your own favorite or least favorite LEGO games yourself, feel free to leave your own thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. But anyway, LEGO bought completely on for a little bit. But anyway, LEGO Island 2 completely dropped the ball on com ah, Why can't I get this line? It's so simple. Brick by brick. <laughs> this is probably the dorkiest, oh, not the dorkiest, but one of the dorkiest things I've ever done.